Hey guys, welcome back to CakeTube. My name is Jen, and today I'm going to show you how to make this oogie boogie cake that's standing on one leg. Let's get started. I drew out what I wanted oogie boogie to look like and made some measurements as well. I used the Sugar Geek Show scaling tutorial as well as her tutorials for how to do structures with threaded rod and washers, locking washers and nuts. So please check out her channel, I'll link it in the description below. Uh, she has so many great tips on structures and I definitely wouldn't have been able to do this cake without all of her tips. I'm starting out by putting my threaded rod into the board that I've pre-drilled a hole into. And on the end of the threaded rod, I put a washer and then a nut. And on top of the board, I put a washer, locking washer, and then a nut on top of that. Next, I'm going to take some channel locks and lock the bottom washer in place so that I can take pliers on the other side and tighten the nut down all the way to the board until my locking washer is flat. Next, I'm going to measure how high up I need to put the next set of nuts and washers for my board for structure. Um, I knew my Oogie Boogie was half the size on paper as I wanted it to be in real life. So it was two inches on the paper, which means I needed to put the board four inches up on the threaded rod. Here I have an 8 inch cardboard with two 6 inch cardboards glued on either side for stability and then I cut a hole in the center and pushed it through the threaded rod. The order that you want to place your structural pieces in is nut, washer, board, washer, locking washer, nut. And make sure your nut is always tightened down so that your locking washer is always flat. Otherwise, your pieces could move around, the threaded rod could come unscrewed, and your piece could fall apart. Next, I'm just trimming off the sides of the board because Oogie is not a perfectly round shape. Next, I covered all my metal pieces in tin foil because the metal is not food safe, but tin foil is. So if you're going to have people eat this cake, this step is definitely mandatory. You don't want any cake touching raw metal. Next, I'm taking just some plain melted marshmallow and spreading it all along the threaded rod as well as the bottom of the structure board because this will help our Rice Krispies stick to the actual board uh, and not just slide off. Again, this is a tip that I got from the Sugar Geek Show. I really can't say enough about how great her tutorials are. I've learned so much from her. Uh, I do pay for a monthly subscription to her website, and if you are into cake decorating, I will highly recommend doing so because she is highly, highly informational. While you're placing your Rice Krispies on the structure, you don't have to have the shape exactly how you want it to be in the end, just the general shape. Once the Rice Krispies harden and firm up, we will be carving them. The Rice Krispies are really warm right when you put them on, so they are going to fall off as you can see in the video, uh, but you can remedy that by just wrapping some plastic wrap around them while they set up, and that way they'll hold their shape. Once your Rice Krispies have set up, you can begin to cut the plastic wrap away. I think I let mine set up for about two hours before I took the plastic wrap off, just to be sure that they stayed in place. I also forgot to mention that I did add some candy melts to my Rice Krispies so they firmed up extra hard. Thank you. 
Next, we are going to stack our cakes. I am choosing ganache as my frosting for this because it sets up really firm in the fridge and is great for structured cakes. Cakes I'm using are eight inch just plain vanilla cakes and I am using ganache that I made with semi-sweet chocolate chips. I will leave a recipe for both in the description box below. Next, it's time to carve. The good thing about Oogie Boogie is, although he's not perfectly circular, he is round, so carving wasn't really that hard. I just began by taking off uh, the front and the back to kind of a flat shape, and then angling the sides to fit the movement of his body. I carved his actual body before I shaped his feet because I wanted to make sure I could get a smooth transition between the cake and the Rice Krispies so it looked as one and not two separate components. Next, we are going to use cake pop dough to bulk out his sides and give him some rolls. Cake pop dough is just a mixture of baked cake and frosting, or in my case, ganache. It's really easy to make. Some people call it cake clay, but essentially you can build up shapes, add texture, add bulk. You could have probably used it in place of the Rice Krispie, but essentially I just used it here to round out his sides, to bridge the gap between the Rice Krispies and the cake, and to give him a little bit more texture on his sides because he is made out of burlap and he has a lot of movement and texture in his body. His body shape really wasn't difficult to carve at all. I just took my time, went slow, I shaved it down where I felt it needed it, added bulk with the cake pop dough where I thought it looked best, and just kind of went along with what felt right as I was making him. Um, I made sure to add some cake pop dough in various places along his body to give, again, just that movement of the fabric, uh, and just really made sure that he had the angle that he was standing on one foot with one hand in the air. So just take your time and it will turn out great. Here I've added another board on top of my cake to support the Rice Krispies that we will be adding for the head. For this part you don't need a washer and a nut just because we're not adding anything too heavy on top so it doesn't need a lot of support. Next I am taking some armature wire and bending it in a loop to fit around the threaded rod. Once I get that on, I will take some modeling chocolate and secure it in place so it doesn't move around. This is going to be the structure for his arms. This is modeling chocolate that I made myself at home. I will leave a recipe for that down in the description below. It was incredibly easy and not expensive at all to make. Uh, you can see that mine is blue. The color here really doesn't matter because it is being covered in Rice Krispies and fondant and all sorts of other stuff, so you won't even be able to see it. Next, I'm taking more Rice Krispie and building up the shape of his head. Now, I actually did this part the day after I did the legs. What I did was I just saved my leftover Rice Krispie in a bowl with a lid, and when I was ready to do his head the next day, I just reheated my Rice Krispies in the microwave, which got the marshmallow melted again, and they were completely pliable and easy to work with. So you really don't have to waste anything if you don't use all your Rice Krispies when you're doing the feet. And again, same concept here. You don't have to have the shape exactly how you want it to turn out, just the general shape so we can carve it after and you don't have to spend a ton of time working on it.
For his arms, I used just straight modeling chocolate because it was a lot more stable and I wanted his arms to have that definite shape uh, that Oogie Boogies do where they're pointy at the ends and I just thought modeling chocolate looked a lot better and it was a lot easier to work with than the Rice Krispies as well. Once I had the modeling chocolate in place, I spent quite a bit of time smoothing everything out and getting the shapes the way I wanted them for the final product. Uh, we will be covering these in fondant, but it is important that your base looks as close to the final product as you can get it. Once I was happy with the arms, I started to carve the legs. I did this very similarly to how I did the body. I just took a little bit off at a time uh, and just shaped it until I was happy with how it looked. I really made sure to try to get his feet as pointy as I could and to also make sure that it was really defined that one of his feet was not touching the board. You might notice you can see the threaded rod and the washer in the back of the foot. That was definitely not intentional, but we do end up covering it with fondant anyways, so I wasn't too worried. Next, I followed the same process to shape the head. For the point of his head, I wanted to use something that was stronger than Rice Krispie, so I again went with modeling chocolate. Modeling chocolate is so easy to work with, this is actually the first time I've ever worked with it, and I was surprised at just how easily it stuck to the Rice Krispie and held its shape and really didn't give me any issues at all, so I highly recommend working with this if you never have. Next, I again used modeling chocolate to make his lips and his eyes. Uh, they are very raised, but they're underneath the fabric of his, I guess, skin versus on top of them. So I wanted to do that step now so that when we laid the fondant over top, it gave the same effect as his character looks in the movie.
With cakes that have characters that are so recognizable like this one, you really want to make sure you're taking your time to get the facial features right, otherwise it's just very clear that it doesn't look like the character. So I did spend a lot of time getting his eye shape right, getting his mouth shape right, uh, and I still feel like I could have done a little better in the end, but my advice to you would be just take your time, look at lots of photos. I ended up adding these lines on his lips where I later added stitching. I couldn't tell if he had these lines or not, even after watching the movie several times. So it felt right to add them, so I went ahead and added them. But obviously, do whatever you feel looks best for your Oogie Boogie. Once all of that is complete, his structure is done and it's time to coat him in ganache and get him ready for fondant. Surprisingly, out of all the spatulas and cake decorating tools I have, what worked best for me to apply the ganache was just a plain old butter knife. You want to make sure you get the ganache all over his entire body, including underneath, because it's going to give the fondant something to stick to easier, and it's also going to smooth out a lot of the textures from the Rice Krispie or the modeling chocolate. Once my rough coat of ganache was applied all over, I took an innovative SugarWorks flexible scraper and began smoothing out the ganache. Again, it's important to get a smooth finish, as smooth as you can, because once we lay the fondant over, it's going to look a lot neater. Even though Oogie Boogie has a lot of wrinkles and texture in his uh, skin, <laughs> it is important just to have that smooth base so we can create the texture ourselves and kind of control the way that looks so it's not just kind of messy. And to take that one step further, once I had finished with my flexible scraper, I dipped my fingers in warm water and began smoothing out the ganache that way. And this was a really effective way to get it just how I wanted it to look, get rid of all the lumps and bumps, and fill in any holes. And here he is, all smoothed out and ready for fondant. Here I'm just measuring how tall and how wide he is so I know how big to roll out my fondant. It is really important to measure on this step because you don't want to roll out too little fondant and not be able to get a nice seam along the sides. Or adversely, you don't want to roll out too much and end up having too heavy a fondant and uh, risk damaging the structure. Once I have the fondant rolled out, I'm going to use an embossed roller to add the burlap texture to the fondant. I will leave a link for this roller in the description below. I had to use a fair amount of pressure with this roller to really get the pattern to show up, but I was surprised that I was able to roll over areas more than once and it all just seemed to fit together seamlessly. You couldn't tell that I had rolled the roller several places. There was really no stop or starting point, so I really highly recommend this tool. Ooh. 
To get the fondant to stick to the set ganache, I just used a spray bottle on a mist setting, just filled with plain water, and lightly misted him. You want to make sure he's not dripping with water, otherwise the fondant will slide right off. I placed the fondant right over the top of him and worked kind of quickly just to make sure I got it secured to his body so it wasn't dragging down, adding extra weight to his arms or his structure, um, and also to make sure it didn't fall off because it is just on a straight up and down surface. As I was adding the fondant, I made sure to add some wrinkles and texture by just bunching the fondant up between my two fingers. I also made sure to cut it away from the crook in his arm and make sure the hand was separated from the body just to give that visual effect that he's not connected in his body parts in any way. For his face, I used my fingers to very gently press in the fondant around the outlines we'd made with the modeling chocolate to make sure those were defined. Um, here's where I wish I had spent a little bit more time on the eyes because they ended up being a lot more round than they originally were. And if they had been just a little bit more triangular on the top, I think he would have looked more menacing. So again, as I've said a lot of times, just take your time, look at reference photos, and just know that it's never going to turn out perfect. The great thing about Oogie Boogie is he already has a seam around his entire body so I didn't have to spend a lot of time trying to hide where the fondant in the front and the back met. Here I am just making a straight line around the whole body so I can cut away the excess ragged fondant and make way for a nice clean line when I add the back panel. Before I added the back panel, I took a pointy silicone clay shaper and just added in some more wrinkles uh, anywhere it felt natural for there to be, anywhere his arm was moving or his body was tilted in a certain way. So just add the wrinkles wherever you feel he needs them. I really do feel the details on this cake is what really makes it between the texture on the fondant and all the wrinkles and the bunching of the fabric. I, I just really think that those details are what's most important in this cake. Next, add your back panel of fondant in the exact same way as you did the front. I decided I wanted to have some bugs sticking out of a rip in Oogie's seam, so I chose a part where I wasn't necessarily happy with the way the two panels of fondant were joined, and I just kind of ripped open a little hole. Next, I'm adding little holes where we are going to put his stitching in.
And for his stitching, I just rolled out some fondant in thin snakes and cut them to about the size I felt was appropriate for the holes and just made sure to join them from one hole into the other. I really wanted to make it look like he was actually stitched, so I made it a point to make the holes deep enough that I could actually stick the fondant in uh, to give the illusion that they are what's holding him together. I did some pieces straight across and some pieces crisscrossed as well. To make Oogie's bugs, I again wanted to use something that was structurally sound, so I went with modeling chocolate. Uh, at room temperature, if it's on the colder side, modeling chocolate does set up hard. So I just colored it in various Oogie Boogie-like colors and made different shapes of worms and bugs. And moving on to one of our final steps, I have some chalk pastel that I have scraped off with an X-Acto blade, and I'm using the black shade to shade in the eyes and the mouth. For all Oogie's little wrinkles as well as where his stitching goes into the fabric, I used mostly brown with a little bit of black to shade those areas uh, and I really feel like it made those areas stand out more. So again, as I said before, I really feel like it's all in the details with this cake. All these little extra things you do are really what make it special and fun. I decided Oogie's hand looked a little empty, so I wanted to make his signature dice. I took some red modeling chocolate and firmed it up in the fridge to make sure I could get it cut into clean square shapes. I then just used a ball tool to make indented holes for the numbers on the dice. To make the skull faces that are on each side of each dice, I looked at lots of reference photos, uh, but I just used a flat silicone tool and a ball tool to mimic all the different shapes. It really wasn't too hard. You don't have to be extremely detailed with this part. As long as you get the general shape, people will understand what it's supposed to be. Once you're done with the dice, pick your favorite side and set it on Oogie's hand. I also chose to use a mixture of the black and brown chalk pastel again to just kind of give them a little bit of dirt to just match the rest of his aesthetic. And once your dice are complete, you're done. I really hope you guys enjoyed this cake as much as I did making it. I've never made a cake that's 3D like this or structured like this, so 
it pushed me a lot out of my comfort zone but in a very good way and I really plan to make more cakes like this on my channel in the future. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please be sure to follow me and subscribe for more cake tutorials. Have a great day.